Hi everyone. So in a very interesting turn of events, I have somehow found myself on booktube. I never considered myself to be like a big reader and I always kind of landed in the self-help space versus like the fictional novel space. I never expected to enjoy my time in these spaces, but it turns out I have been thoroughly enjoying listening to book reviews and I think that's because I've been kind of looking for inspiration about my own book for a really long time. I've been wanting to write like a self-help non-fiction book, but in the back of my mind, I always really had a thing for fictional characters and just like wanting to write a novel as well. I kind of dove deep into the world of reading and book reviews and I have really thoroughly enjoyed it. I just think it's such a cool space to be in. Everyone that's like reviewing books is so articulate and so smart and intelligent and I just feel like I'm getting so much out of these book reviews that I decided to join the club and give my own book review of one of the recent novels that I read, I have also been learning a lot about tropes and it's very easy to recognize the tropes that I gravitate towards. For those of you who don't know, I majored in cinema and television arts and the emphasis I had was on screenwriting. And so I learned a lot about the art of story structure and crafting stories that have really good like plans and payoffs and you know, character development, internal conflict, plot, all that stuff. Um, I also did an internship for a production company where I read like so many screenplays and would give very detailed reviews about all of these categories. So if you want me to do more book reviews that are actually structured in the way that I would like review a screenplay, that might be kind of fun too. But for today, I just kind of wrote down my random thoughts about this book that I listened to. I got the audiobook. That's kind of my gauge. If I really like a book after listening to it, I will buy the hard copy because I'll want to keep it on my bookshelf. But the book I wanted to give a review for is If He Had Been With Me by Laura Nolan. I am one of those people where if I hear that a book has a specific trope that I like, I will immediately buy it. And the trope that this one had basically was like one of the main characters dies at the end and that's not a spoiler because they literally tell you that in the first page of the book, like the very first chapter is this car accident and this death scene basically. And then you kind of rewind and you learn the story of Autumn and her neighbor Phineas, who she calls Finny, and they're developing friendship through their life I guess up until the start of like eighth grade high school and both of their moms were really good friends and they grew up being neighbors and it was just kind of one of those things where as soon as high school started they grew apart. I will be going into spoilers so if you don't want that this is not the video for you because I have a lot to say and I think a lot of it is going to spoil the book if you're going to read it but as a general overview I found this book to be very boring and I don't know how people react if you criticize a book that they like but this book is very popular i have seen it all over tiktok all over youtube all over like target walmart every store barnes and noble like this book is very very popular and that's why i gravitated towards it i wanted to read it i thought it was going to be good and just to give you a vibe this might totally deter you from my reviews but i had gotten a book recommendation years ago from a friend who said that they read a book called 13 Reasons Why and it was about a girl who committed suicide and at the start of the book she basically went through all of the 13 reasons why that she did it and it was 13 tapes for 13 people. Instantly I was convinced to buy it. Instantly I knew I would like it and I did. I loved it so much and I realized that so much of why I liked that book was based on the character development because I loved the idea of watching, it's like a forbidden love kind of trope. Like you're watching this love developed between two people who you know will never be able to be together because you know one of them is going to be dead at the end and like you know it for sure because that's like how it starts and so i really enjoyed that type of forbidden love story because it's just so painful but it's also like you can't get mad because you know it's going to be painful from the beginning so that's why i bought this book and i think where it really fell flat for me was the character not the character development but like the relationship of the characters i was just so bored <laughs> I didn't really like it. Basically, the book depicts a girl's entire high school journey. So it starts when she's a freshman, basically, and then you're getting a lot of flashbacks throughout her high school experience to things she did when she was younger with her neighbor, Finney. And 
it felt very repetitive because when you're going through four years of high school, it's like, okay, how many winter breaks are we going to get? How many summers are we going to get? How much? Like, it was just four years of high school and I wasn't invested in her friend group. What I gathered was that she was a girl who wore tiaras to school and she was dating a guy that people thought was hot. And like, that was kind of it. I didn't find her particularly interesting. And I actually feel like the book focused so heavily on like her internal dialogue. And it wasn't that it wasn't well written like her internal dialogue was fine it was just there was so much of it it was like if you want to live in a 14 to 18 year old's head for four years who's extremely emotional and very boring that's kind of what this book was and i don't want to be mean because like i just feel so bad like i know writing a book is like a huge accomplishment and obviously this one's very successful so i don't want it to come off as like a critique of the author i think it's just the type of story that it was wasn't for me i also feel like the relationship between autumn and finney like it was a very slow burn like you were given bits and pieces of their relationship that was built throughout childhood up until high school and so it did make sense why they were friends and why they got along so well. It was just such a slow burn. It was just so, it took so long to get through this book. I don't even know how many pages it was, but I think it was like eight hours of listening. I don't know. It was a lot. So on Amazon, this book has four stars and 26,000 reviews. So that's pretty good. On Goodreads, it also has four stars. The average rating is 3.9 and has 208,000 votes. That's crazy. I wonder, Barnes & Noble has four and a half stars and 114 reviews. Like at max, this is a three star. I would probably give it 2.25, maybe two and a half. Mm, I don't know, like three feels very generous. Oh, actually, okay, this Common Sense Media review calls this book a slow burn romance that focuses on the main character's story and thoughts. Let me see if I can find a summary. I'm gonna look up a, a blurb. I also feel like the main character, it was hard to kind of envision her for me personally. Like I understood that she wore tiaras and then she said near the end of the book that she knew she was pretty, but that was kind of like all I gathered from her. I don't know, maybe that's just me, but I like to like really envision people. And I feel like some of the descriptions about like appearance were pretty vague. The blurb says, if he had been with me, if he had been with me, everything would have been different. I wasn't with Finn on that August night, but I should have been. It was raining, of course, and he and Sylvie were arguing as he drove down the slick road. No one ever saw what they were arguing about. Other people think it's not important. They do not know there is another story, the story that lurks between the facts. What they do not know, the cause of the argument, is crucial. So let me tell you. I mean, that's the Goodreads blurb. So I made a little Google Doc um, going through the book and kind of just jotting down my initial thoughts and reactions. This is very unorganized, but if you were interested in this, I would love to do more. I've been wanting to get more into reading, so book recommendations, highly recommended. If he had been with me, this is going to have spoilers. So one of the major spoilers that I will give right away is I did not cry. I was expecting this to be gut-wrenching and sad and painful, and I wanted to be so in love with the love story of these two people that it was tragic when they couldn't be together and he died and I didn't feel that at all. I didn't cry. I didn't find it that sad. To me, I was like, finally, this is like literally what we've been waiting for for hundreds of pages. And this might have been an issue with like not enough plot, but I just feel like it was a really boring girl in high school. And it was also just kind of a weird miscommunication. And I hate that trope of like arguing or fighting over complete miscommunication. It was weird but i guess it also like played into the nuances of like kind of friendship breakups where like nothing specifically happened but you just like something weird happened and then you didn't talk about it and then time went by and then you were like forced proximity so you're like around each other a lot but then you never talk about the deeper issues and it's just like confusion so like i guess that part was good but you just it took so long to get that initial thoughts i said that it was too long very slow at points there was a lot of repetition and boring flashbacks. Um, it spanned over four years of high school. The characters I really didn't care about. Um, like I said, she was a girl that wore tiaras to school and has a hot boyfriend, but doesn't seem to love him that much. I also felt like one of the, I mean, I wouldn't say a main point because it was only mentioned like two or three times, but this main girl has this boyfriend that she starts dating like freshman year of high school. And pretty quickly, I think he like talks about 
wanting to have sex with her and she's not ready and he's okay with it and then he brings it up again i think maybe the next year they're like i think on the beach or something and she again wasn't ready and she didn't really know why she wasn't ready and he wasn't mad but he was a little frustrated and he never like pressured her which is good i kind of actually liked the part in the book where it's like you just weren't ready but you didn't know why i liked that the guy didn't force anything on her but it was also like i mean over four years it makes sense Sense, I think from his perspective to like kind of talk about it once a year maybe the last time it was brought up she didn't really have a reason and she didn't know what to keep saying and so she gave herself kind of like this deadline of like I guess we'll do it at graduation and I really love that because then it puts this like expectation and this pressure and this timeline on it when she didn't know if she could emotionally get there in time okay so the undertones of mental health were also I guess relatively good in this book it's established that the main girl Autumn's mother suffers from mental health issues quite heavily she has a therapist she i think has been hospitalized a few times for like um suicide attempts and then at some point in high school i think it's like sophomore year the mom starts noticing signs with the daughter of depression and so she takes her to her doctor to get medicine and the girl is like not happy about this she's embarrassed she thinks it's stupid she doesn't think she needs this and the mom is like i know the signs like you're doing this and i actually really liked that because i think there's such a stigma with medicating mental health issues and treating them like they are a disease that needs treatment and the mother did a really good job of being like this runs in the family this is genetic this is not something to mess around with and she very much like took charge and was like this is happening and i like that because i think a common place we could easily fall into is like oh medicine shouldn't have been like the first thing to go to she was only a teenager like she could try other things but when it's so genetic and so serious and the mom's like recognizing these signs i actually liked that that was part of the book where it was just like no this is happening and then she started feeling better once she started taking the medicine that kind of was an undertone throughout the whole book as well like the mother's mental health the daughter's mental health every winter she would get depressed for like the entire time that it was cold which is like a good portion of the year so i feel like autumn's relationship with her boyfriend like the boyfriend the whole time kept being like i'll never leave you you know i'll, I'll always stay with you and kept giving her this reassurance but i feel like more kind of could have been touched on with how hard it was for him to be with someone who was like so depressed because i just feel like that was thrown in at the end where it's like you're depressed all the time like it's hard for me to deal with and it was just like well you didn't say that for four years so also one of the things i noticed was the dialogue tags they were so prominent and it was actually getting to be really annoying and i don't know if i noticed this only because i was listening to the audiobook or if it was just because i'd been learning about how like the sign of poor writing or new writing is extensive dialogue tags but i seriously felt like there were scenes where it was like i said he said i said he said and it was just a lot and that got annoying a couple times but it, like it wasn't that big of a deal again there wasn't even that much dialogue in this book it was so much internal thinking from this main girl that i thought was actually really peculiar like maybe i just haven't read a book like that in a while but eh. um there were a few bits of like foreshadowing that i thought were pretty good like her friend's pregnancy so one of autumn's friends from high school talks about like having sex for the first time and one of the other friends asks if they like used a condom or something and she said like no they didn't have one i think they were in a car and they were like you didn't use one like you can get pregnant after doing it one time and she's like don't ruin this for me it was just one time there wasn't a talk about like plan b or anything which i mean i feel like that could have been thrown in there but it was funny because the main girl autumn was just like i don't know how you just like lose control in the moment like i never lose control in the moment i'm always aware of what's going on and i would never just like do that and of course the friend ends up being pregnant then there were like other instances where like one of the friends cheated on her boyfriend but it was like this guy kissed her and she like kissed back for half a second and then stopped and then told her boyfriend about it and they decided to stay together and like it wasn't that big of a deal i think they were like freshman or sophomore at the time and i don't know i guess that could be foreshadowing for like more cheating in the future also like i said there were so many times where autumn was like asking for validation about the relationship with her boyfriend and he's continuously saying i'm never gonna leave you i'm never gonna leave you of course what does he do he leaves her by cheating on her with a friend and having sex with a friend i guess that was uh predictable one of the things i did like was that the boyfriend of autumn kept you know asking about when they were eventually gonna sleep together 
and they were gonna do it after graduation, but he ends up sleeping with a friend of theirs before prom and then like doesn't tell her because he doesn't want to ruin prom. He doesn't just like sleep with Autumn to sleep with her. He ends up breaking up with her, which I was really happy he didn't just like sleep with her and then break up with her. I also don't really know what would have happened if he hadn't cheated on Autumn with the friend, if, if they had like stayed together, but he knew he wanted to end things. If he still would have slept with her, like that would have been messed up, but that didn't happen. So anyway, oh, there were some other interesting things sprinkled in where like Autumn calls Finny once when she's drunk because Finny's like the childhood friend that she kind of like had different social groups once they went into high school so they like barely talked at school and they only saw each other when their parents were like hanging out. So one time Autumn's at a party and she gets drunk for the first time and she calls Finny and he tells her not to have sex for the first time when she's drunk. I thought that that was like a really good line for character development for Finny because he's just like such a good guy. Finny was also just like, I almost wanted more from him. I just feel like he was super quiet and laid back and chill and sweet, but like there could have been so much more potential to like feel the sweetness of this boy. That sounded really weird. <laughs> My point was he seems like a very sweet character and I liked him so much more than her boyfriend, Autumn's boyfriend, which I think was purposefully done obviously, but I just wish we got a little bit more of like Phineas's personality because he seemed so wise and sweet and kind. Phineas had a girlfriend and he tells his girlfriend to be nice to Autumn for him, I guess. And he later admits to Autumn that he had sex when he was drunk and he didn't like doing that. So he like wouldn't really do it very often, but his girlfriend only wanted to have sex when she was drunk because some stuff happened to her before that. And it never really went into what happened to her, but it sounded like traumatic. And so that was just kind of like brushed over and vague, but I feel like it would have been interesting to like go into that more. Like that seems bad to only want to have sex when you're drunk because something happened to you before that. That's really sad. Maybe that's what he meant because he was telling Autumn like not to judge her. And then of course, what the entire book was basically leading up to was Autumn and Finny finally having sex and getting together, which happened at the very, very end of the book. And I have a few things to say about this sex scene. Some of it I thought was well done and some of it was very much problematic. So I wrote here that it was good, but it was ruined. So it felt authentic. It made sense. It was like a very well done slow burn, I would say, because it didn't feel like off for the characters to like want to do that, I guess. It didn't feel like insta love. It wasn't confusing that she would finally be ready to sleep with him. That kind of was like the undercurrent of the whole story was that she was never ready to sleep with her boyfriend because it was always Phineas that she was supposed to be with. Basically the summer after high school, Phineas's girlfriend is like studying abroad and Phineas and Autumn hang out like the whole summer. Autumn's parents are getting divorced and she's depressed and Phineas is like there to make her feel better and he's like there every single day. They hang out and stuff. It's like old times. Phineas basically always loved her and Autumn didn't know that or wasn't ready to reciprocate that when she was younger. So finally one night they sleep together and they don't have a condom. And so when Phineas is like, I don't have anything, she's like, I don't care. And he's like, Autumn, no. He literally says no. And she's like begging him like a child. She's like, please, 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 please. And I'm like, if this was opposite, if a guy was begging a girl to be able to sleep with her without a condom, everyone would have a problem with that. But like nobody says anything about a girl pressuring a guy in that situation. And it's very problematic. Hold on, I'm thirsty. But I understand like the, the foreshadowing and the way that it was like paid off because Autumn specifically said about her friend, like, I don't understand how you just like lose track of the moment and just do it anyway because you don't care. Like she was like, I would never do that. And then of course she's with Phineas and she's like, I didn't care about anything. I just didn't want to lose this moment with him. And that I guess made more sense. Like if you're actually in love, why that would be the case, but did not like that he was like, no, we shouldn't do this. And she was like, begging. I also liked that they touched on the fact that Phineas had said he wanted to break up with his girlfriend like weeks earlier, but he was waiting for her to come back from Europe or wherever she was. And he literally sleeps with Autumn like the day before he's going to go break up with his girlfriend. So technically cheating, bad way to start out a relationship. And I liked that they addressed that. I think she asked him if he felt guilty for technically cheating on his girlfriend. And he said that he did, but he felt like he was like investing in something greater. It made logical sense, but still I would not want to start out a relationship on cheating. So basically, yeah, after they have sex, Phineas goes to tell his girlfriend that he's going to break things off 
and I think that night is the night that he gets in the car accident which was literally in the first chapter of the book and he dies of course so then Autumn goes into a deep depression stops taking her medication even though it was upped she wasn't taking it she was laying in bed I guess it was just like a known thing that she wasn't gonna go away to college because Phineas was dead she was depressed so she stayed home that month and then trigger warning she decides that she is going to kill herself which wasn't that surprising I guess knowing her history of depression knowing the history with the mom and of course knowing her love for Phineas who is now also dead I think there might have been like a line about he would understand because she would be with him or something. So it kind of goes through the process of her writing a note, leaving it on the table, going over to Phineas's house, the room that they were last in. I'm pretty sure like it was still the way it was when they had like slept there the night before the accident. And she grabs like the biggest kitchen knife and takes it up with her and like puts a note on the outer door saying like, you don't need to come in. By the time you see this, it'll be too late. Like save yourself the grief, like let the cops do it, I think is kind of the gist and in the next scene she wakes up in the hospital and her wrists are like bandaged up and they sting and the nurse is like asking her some questions and then one of the questions is when is the date of like the start of your last period and she's like we have to ask everyone this and autumn doesn't remember and i think it's been like like a month or two at this point and so you re realize like oh she's pregnant now so the book basically ends with autumn and her like bandaged wrists holding her stomach as the nurse goes to like get a test or something and Autumn thinking Phineas wouldn't approve of her doing anything else to hurt herself knowing that there was like a baby inside but I also honestly really liked that idea of like I don't know why I'm so freaking weird for this but I have always been fascinated by the concept of like someone you love dying and then finding out after they're gone that you're pregnant with their baby because it's like a little piece of them is like living on. And I don't know, it's like they planted a seed before they left. So I actually enjoyed the ending, I suppose. I don't know, am I talking myself into liking this book more? It was very long and very slow and there were a lot of chapters that I kind of wished were just like smushed together or maybe just like less internal dialogue. But going through four years of high school was a lot. Like I wish it was shorter. But I also understand the appeal of the slow burn. Maybe I'm just an impatient reader and I like to get to the like meat of things. But overall, I guess I would probably give this three stars. It was definitely not my favorite. I definitely think there wasn't enough action. A lot of it was very like boring action and I it did develop the characters, but just in a way that I didn't care about that much. Like it talked about the main girl in her English class and how her English teacher liked her and how she was good at school and how she was really sick and she was throwing up but she wouldn't leave class because she had a final the next period and people thought she was pregnant and she's like that's impossible i haven't had sex and i'm just like okay that's relatable <laughs> like there was literally a time i passed out when i was a freshman in high school and the nurse was like trying to make me go home and call my mom and i was like i can't i have a chemistry final next period like i'm, I'm not leaving and she's like what she's like well you have to call your mom and tell her and i'm like okay she's not gonna care and i called and i'm like hi yeah i passed out in pe but uh I can't leave because I have a chemistry final and she's like oh okay do you need anything you have lunch money and I'm like yeah I'll go I'm gonna go buy some pizza I'll be fine it was I didn't eat breakfast it was 100 degrees that day it was, okay so clearly I relate to the main character slightly I mean not really I didn't go around wearing tiaras and stuff but I think I'm just a very boring person and so reading a book about myself is very boring <laughs> I don't know Anyway, those are my thoughts on the book, if he had been with me. I would say a very average three-star book. Definitely not my favorite, definitely not horrible. I could see some good qualities of the writing, some good aspects of the story, but I don't know if it's worth the hype that it got. Like I said, besides the dialogue tags, the writing was good. I just didn't personally like the style of less dialogue and more internal thoughts. I just feel like a lot of it was just like a high school girl in her brain. It was kind of boring, but it might just be not for me. I might just be too old for these types of books now. Maybe I would have liked it when I was in high school. I probably would have. I didn't read much back then, but anyway, sorry this review was very rambly. I'm so new at this, but I think this is so, so fun and I really want to start reviewing more books. So give me your best romance novels, sad books. I'm very curious about Colleen Hoover. I've listened to some Rachel Oates reviews about her books and to me they don't sound good but they are very very popular. 
So help a girl out. Give me book recommendations. I would love to make more book videos, book reviews. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. I love you guys. Bye.